No, Israel needs to crush these bastards. What they did to their innocent civilians is unspeakable. It was their people, their country that were affected by this. And as I speak to you today, in one battle, the Israelis lost 10 IDF soldiers, 10. That would be like the United States losing 10,000. Biden warns Israel is losing global support over indiscriminate bombing in Gaza. The Israelis have tens of thousands of infantry in Gaza. There's not indiscriminate bombing going on in Gaza. That is blasphemy. That is a flat out lie. You see, Joe Biden is a backstabbing street politician. He'll do whatever he has to do, say whatever he has to say to survive. And so out of one side of his mouth, I stand with Israel. We're gonna give them what weapons they need. Other the other side of the mouth, it's the government of Israel has to dissolve itself. Too many religious parties, you see. Too many orthodox in that, in that government. This is a position that's been pushed by the New York Times and the radical secularists and Marxists in Israel. And so now it's this indiscriminate bombing that's taking place in Gaza. There isn't indiscriminate bombing taking place. The Israelis set up these safe areas. They tell the Gazans, go to these safe areas. Have you ever heard of an air force that does that in the middle of a war? Not one, certainly not ours. And so you know who goes to those safe places? Hamas. That's where they start putting their missiles and everything. So they don't want safe places. Israel drops phony bombs. They're called bump bombs to warn people, we're going to hit this in 30 minutes, get out. They send out text messages. They send out flyers. They do everything they can that no other nation on the face of the earth does to try and avoid civilians. But their goal is to win and save their very existence. It's not to feed and medicate Gazan civilians when their own government won't do that, when other Arab nations won't do that, and never have. The goal is to win, to crush the enemy, so what took place never happens again. The goal is to fight this, this budding caliphate that is being funded by Joe Biden and the State Department and the Defense Department. Billions and billions of dollars going to Iran, which is really the umbrella terrorist nation. Funding Hamas directly with UNRWA and the UN, which Donald Trump had cut off. Funding the PLO, Arafat's founded PLO, to hundreds of millions of dollars a year, despite the fact they won't denounce terrorism and support Hamas. Donald Trump had cut that off. He cut off Iran. Iran was on its back. We've talked about this over and over and over again. And then Joe Biden says, but Israel has to change. You see the the sanctimony, you see the anti-Semitism here, no other country is treated like this. Israel is a sovereign nation. It is a parliamentary system, a democracy, not a republic. The prime minister is the head of a party that got the most votes, it wasn't even close. He has to build a coalition with other parties. And he's built a coalition with other parties. Some of them are what they call religious parties, that is parties that are led by Orthodox Jews. This drives Biden and Blinken the Obama sycophants, the media, nuts. It's the way they think of Orthodox Jews in this country, or evangelical Christians in this country, or faithful Catholics in this country. They hate all of us. And to be part of a government, you can't have that. Only radical, secularist Jews can actually represent the Jewish state. And when it comes to radical, secularist Jews, they make up about 25 to 30 percent of the population of Israel. They don't represent the entire country, so they have elections. Biden doesn't like the result of the elections. Obama didn't like the result of the elections. Jake Tapper and the rest of the media don't like the results of the elections. Thomas Friedman, a self-hater, he doesn't like the results of the elections. So what does Biden say? Well, let's take a listen. The United Nations General Assembly has overwhelmingly approved a measure calling for a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza. Really, a humanitarian ceasefire in Gaza? And pray tell, who is in the United States General Assembly? Communist China? Fascistic Russia? Anybody calling for a ceasefire? Iran? Syria? Cuba? I go on and on about the genocidal regimes, how they treat their own people, how they treat neighboring countries. So they get together. And the only country where they want a ceasefire is Israel. Why? Because Hamas, Hezbollah, Iran, and the other desert rats Ceasefire simply means Israel stops. It doesn't mean they stop. There was a ceasefire 
on October 6th. They broke it on October 7th. No, Israel needs to crush these bastards. What they did to their innocent civilians is unspeakable. It's unspeakable. It was their people, their country that were affected by this. And as I speak to you today, in one battle, the Israelis lost 10 IDF soldiers, 10, in a country with 7 million Jews. They lost 10. That would be like the United States losing 10,000. It's just incredible, or 5,000. Does anybody care? No, the media are going to report, of course not. Go. The U.S. was one of 10 nations to vote against the non-binding resolution. You know who voted for it, among others? Canada. This Trudeau is a skunk. He's an absolute skunk. Go ahead. Before today's vote, President Joe Biden said Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu needs to change his hardline government, adding that Israel is losing global support due to what he called its indiscriminate bombing in Gaza. President Biden's off-camera remarks to Democratic donors in Washington today are the latest sign of increasing U.S. concern about Israel's bombing campaign in Gaza. It's not U.S. concern. Say what they will. Biden doesn't speak for tens of millions of us. Another survey that was done shows the American people, overwhelming majority, support Israel. Even a bigger majority of Republicans support Israel. So it's not the United States, it's the Biden administration. Why does Biden want this to stop? For Biden's sake, not the civilians. Biden doesn't give a damn about the civilians in Afghanistan or even on the American hostages there. I'm the only one even talking about them, that we left Americans behind. He doesn't give a damn about the civilians in Hong Kong or China. He doesn't give a damn about the civilians in Ukraine. He doesn't talk about Ukraine in the sense of how many civilians are being slaughtered over there by the Russians, does he? But even more to the point, he doesn't give a damn about the civilians in this country, whether it's on the southern border and all the deaths occurring, the rape, the mayhem, the outright murder, the drugs. He doesn't give a damn about the death in our streets, black on black crime, how that's turning out. Thousands of people killed every week. He doesn't even talk about it. But here, all of a sudden, he's concerned about the Palestinian civilians. Why? Because he doesn't want to lose Michigan. He doesn't want to lose some of these towns and states that have significant pockets of uh, Arabs and Muslims, particularly since we've had open borders. He doesn't want to do anything about protecting civilians in America, on the border, in our cities, in our streets, hasn't lifted a damn finger. In fact, to the extent he's done anything, he's created all kinds of mayhem and misery, and yes, deaths. But he's worried about here, so he's putting pressure on the Jews. They don't want Netanyahu in there. They don't want his government in there. They want a government in there that will bend over backwards, that will turn over Judea and Samaria to these Palestinians, that will turn over their ancestral indigenous homeland to the Palestinians, who never had any claim to any land there or anywhere else that's called Israel. Nowhere. And they would turn over their original capital, if you will. I've talked about it before, Shiloh. It's Shiloh, spelled like Shiloh, Shiloh, where the various Jewish tribes came together and formed what we consider today Judaism. Predates the city of David, the city of David predates Jerusalem. That's how far back this goes, 4,000 years. Suddenly, oh, you need to give that up. Two-state solution, says who? Says Joe Biden in the United States in the Oval Office. Joe Biden just doesn't want to lose the votes of Arabs and Muslims in this country, which is sickening. If the Arabs and Muslims in this country that he's concerned about getting their vote support the annihilation or the carving up of Israel that will result in that, then stand against them as far as I'm concerned. But the stereotypes about the Jews and their government and the idea that you think you have the power to tell the Israeli people what kind of government they should have and the Israeli government that's duly formed and elected, what they should do. I call this, in a ses essence, you know, they talk about globalization. This is a new form of American colonialism and imperialism exercised by the radical left, Blinken, Sullivan, Obama, 
Biden and their propagandists in the media and in Congress, the Democrat Party. In other words, they're imperialists and globalists. It's as if they are settling, conquering Israel, telling Israel how to fight its war. I mean, all the way down to the minutia on the tactics, telling Israel it has to have a ceasefire, telling Israel it must supply weapons and, and fuel to the other side, stolen by Hamas and used against the Israeli soldiers, telling Israel that they must carve up their country, telling Israel that they must change their government. Who the hell did we talk to this way other than the Israelis? It is truly grotesque. Go ahead. Which has killed thousands of Palestinian civilians. How many of those thousands of Palestinian civilians were killed by Hamas? Directly and indirectly. How many of those thousands of Palestinian uh, civilians are not civilians, but are part of the Hamas terrorist operation? The Israelis said they've killed like 14, 15, 16,000 terrorists, which would make up the significant bulk of the people who are dying. There's no doubt civilians are dying. How could they not? when terrorists don't abide by the rule of law. That said, they throw out this number, they get it from the Gaza Health Service, and they never make distinctions. Okay, let's break down this 16, 17, 18, 12, 14,000. Number one, here's where we get the number. And I learned the other day that you know who they count as children when they count, you know, civilians who've died? Any Gazan who's 19 or under. Half of their terrorists are 18, 19, 20 years old. 19 or under? Um, that seems rather strange. So the numbers are purposely manipulated. They don't provide us with a breakdown of the numbers because they don't have them and they don't care. They don't give you a fact like I just gave you. They count children as 19 and under. I mean, we have people in the military who are 19, 18, some are 17. My father was 17. George H.W. Bush was 17 when he went in, but so forth and so on. But a 16-year-old, a 16-year-old with a tank buster weapon is a 16-year-old with a tank buster weapon. In other words, he's still the enemy. But what about all these civilians, Mark? What about them? What the hell are the Israelis supposed to do? Surrender? Cease fire? No nation does that. That's why you never heard about civilian deaths. Read, read most history books in the Civil War. There's a few that talk about civilian deaths. Almost none of them do. World War II. How many civilians died in Japan? During the course of the war, nobody gave a damn. Same with Nazi Germany. Same with fascistic Italy. People don't count there. I don't know. That Dresden, look at all the civilians died. They used to cheer. Dresden's gone. We're defeating the Germans. Not um, cease fire. Are you feeding the people in Germany while you're trying to defeat them? What kind of cuckoo is that? Go. Bibi's got a tough decision to make, the president said of Israel's prime minister. This is the most conservative government in Israel's history. The most conservative government in Israel's history. I'm not sure about that. Menachem Begin's government was very, very conservative, and Menachem Begin wouldn't take any crap from him when he was the chairman I believe it was the House Foreign Affairs Committee in that famous showdown between the two of them where Biden was doing the same thing to Begin. He was too extreme, the same thing to the elected Israeli government. He was threatening with conditioning or even cutting off aid to them if they didn't support some kind of two-state solution and so forth and so on. And that's where Begin said, I don't come to you as a Jew on bended knee. And he said, we've faced a lot of enemies without the help of the United States. And we've defeated them. And you can't threaten me. That's what he said. You can't threaten me. The Prime Minister of Israel is talking to this way. What he means by that is when Israel actually fought for independence in 1948, the United States didn't help Israel. The United States wasn't the quote unquote most, most important ally of Israel until uh, 1967 when that war broke out. Before that, the closest ally Israel had was France. And one of Israel's closest allies was Russia. But the Israelis aligned with the United States 
distanced themselves from the Russians. France went soft, as it often does. And so now the closest ally that Israel has is the United States. But when you have a Democrat in office like an Obama or Biden, it's not that close. They do things that any American president would do, certainly since 1967. And they do that with one hand. and the other hand, they're undermining them, like they are now. Blinken is traveling the world. He's done shuttle diplomacy. He's traveled the Middle East to build opposition to the Netanyahu government, to build opposition to Israel actually winning this war once and for all with Hamas, and also to push his agenda. They're propped up Iran. They propped up these terrorist entities we've been talking about. And even though they're attacking American soldiers, the Houthis, Iran, and other terrorists, with money that we've allowed to go into Iran, with money that we've provided some of these terrorist operations through international organizations and some directly like the PLO, he won't even take a step to protect our soldiers. So which government really is it? that needs to be addressed? Which government really is it that needs to be shaken up? Netanyahu and his government are doing exactly what any rational, sane government would do, protecting its people, trying to defeat an enemy that seeks to destroy them and blow them off the face of the earth. And they say, no, 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 no. First, we're going to blow you off the face of the earth. No, 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 you need restraint. You got to fix your government. You need to feed the people. On the other side of the war, you've got to do this, you can't do that, you can't. So which government is it that needs to be changed? And that's extreme. The government that's funding Iran, the government that's funding Hamas, Hezbollah, the PLO, that's the government that needs to be changed. For more, sign up for Levin TV.